Hey everyone, welcome to GQ Design Studio. My name is Gabe and today I'm going to be showing how to make this painting right here. Here's the colors that you're going to be using. We have black, yellow, magenta, a lavender, cobalt blue, and white. We're going to be using three brushes. The first brush we're going to be using is this fat brush right here and we're going to name him Megatron. Next we'll be using this brush right here and his name is Ignacio. And finally we have this small brush right here and we're going to name him Tito. Oh, he's so cute. You will also need a water cup and a paper towel. We're going to start off with Megatron here and we're going to dip him into our black paint. We're going to start off with black paint and then make really really wide brush strokes going from one side of the canvas to the other. And we're going to bring this black line down to about three inches or so. We're also going to paint the canvas on the side, on the left and the right. And let's drop the black down a little bit on the sides so it kind of has like a hill right here. So we're just going to bring it down a little bit so it has this dry brush texture. For dry brushing we just have a little bit of paint on Megatron. So that way when we go down it's like this wispy texture down here. And it's not really solid but you can still see it. Let's go ahead and clean off Megatron. Next color we're going to use with Megatron is the blue paint. And then with this blue I'm just going to go right here along where I dry brushed it and go back and forth with my brush and slowly bring it up into the black paint so it creates this gradient going from this blue to a black. And just like we did the dry brush a second ago, we're going to do the same thing with the blue. We're just going to create a nice little dry brush down here. So it can help us mix in our next color. So now I'm going to take Megatron, take a scoop of the blue, and put it right here in between the blue and the white paint. And now I'll take a scoop of the white paint, mix it together to make a light blue. And now with this light blue, I'm just going to go right under where I dry brushed it and slowly bring it up into the blue. And now it's creating a new gradient coming from this lighter blue to the cobalt blue to the black. So I'm just keeping my brush in horizontal brush strokes. So now with this blue I'm just going to frame this purple interaction. So now with the blue we're just going to bring it down to the sides about halfway down the canvas. So we're just going to create a frame right here around where the moon's going to go. And we're going to slowly taper out off into the side. Now we can clean off Megatron one more time and we're going to go back to the regular cobalt blue and just help ease in this blend between the two blues. So I'm going in from the sides and just giving it a little bit of texture and also painting that side as I go along with it. So we're going to stop there for now and move on to our next color and for that we'll take a scoop of this white paint and put it over by the lavender and I'll take a little bit of this magenta, mix it in with a little bit of lavender as well. So we have this light pinkish color. And with this color about two inches down from the center, I'm just going to draw a horizontal line going across. And this will be the horizon line. So just do your best to draw a straight line across. And now along the edges where the white meets the light blue, we'll go ahead and mix in some of this purple. We're going to put Megatron off to the side for now and move on to Ignacio. So now we'll go with Ignacio and I'll just block off a nice big circle right here in the center. Keep in mind this moon is about 7 inches wide so make the purple around it even bigger than that. So now with Ignacio I'm just going to rotate my brush in a circle like this and I'm just going to kind of go out into my blue so it kind of looks like this foggy kind of cloudy texture is just like overlaying the blue. And now we're roughly drawing where our moon's going to go. Everything on the outside of those lines can be filled in with these lavender clouds. The top of this purple line should be about 4 inches down from the canvas. We're going to let the canvas dry for now and we're going to go back and do the moon now. Alright, so now it's time for the moon. So we can go ahead and put white paint on Ignacio. And we're just going to block out where we think the moon should go. So make sure you leave some purple around the edges because you still want to see the purple fog around the moon. So now I'll just take a little bit of black and just a little bit because a little bit of black goes a very, very long way. And we're going to mix it together and form a gray color. 
And now I'll just go and uh, fill in this moon with this gray here. So let's go from the center and work our way out to the edges of this moon. So now that we have the moon filled in, we can go ahead and start doing some stylized craters. So let's go ahead and go in with white and we're just going to create some dabs, some large dabs going across the moon. We want to make this moon kind of textured. So we'll just go around and dab this moon up so it's not just a flat color. And now let's go in with a little bit of a darker gray and we'll dab in some large craters. And I'll go over that with white one more time just to create some more highlights. And let's just lighten up the center a little bit. And that's good for the moon for now. So you see on the original painting that it has like these splatters kind of creating like a star kind of texture. We're going to create that effect by putting Megatron into the white paint and really diluting it. So you really want to dilute it with a lot of water. So we want it super watery so we can flick our brush and create some of these stars. So I'm just really diluting the paint and then I'm flicking my brush. And it's going to give us this nice little splatter texture. That's it for the stars, so we can go ahead and switch over back to Ignacio. And the next color we're going to use with him is yellow. So we'll put Ignacio into the yellow paint. And now we'll introduce some yellow down over here towards the bottom. And we'll just bring it up closer towards the moon. So I just dipped my brush one time and brought it in. And I'm just bringing it up. We're going to do some more clouds and things on top of the moon, but we have to wait for the moon to dry before we can do that. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the foreground of the painting, which is the ocean. So let's retire Ignacio into the water cup and take out his best friend, Megatron. So now with Megatron, we're going to go ahead and dip him into the blue paint. And we're going to try our best to draw a nice straight line along the horizon line. And the horizon line here is about an inch or two below the halfway point of the canvas. So I'm turning my brush sideways like this so I can get a nice straight line. So go ahead and find that point and just do your best to draw a nice straight line. So we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of black on Megatron. We're not going to worry about cleaning him off. And we're just going to introduce some black over here on these bottom corners. That way it looks like there's a shadow. So I'm going to go in like this and have some dry brushing. And the black comes out more towards the bottom of the painting. And we're just going to even out this black over here on this corner now. I want to do the same concept. And let's bring that black over to the sides of the canvas as well. So we'll clean off our brush. We're going to use some more of that lighter blue. And with that lighter blue, we're just going to fill in some of this area in the center here. So I'm doing horizontal strokes with this blue and white. And I'm just bringing it down, filling up that white space. Towards the edges, I'm just going to use more of the cobalt blue. So that way it's a little bit darker on the sides. And we're going to go down into the black so it naturally mixes together and gives us a nice little shadow here. And I'll do the same thing on this edge here. Mixing in the blue with the black, giving us this nice little shadow. So we want to keep the center part the lightest part. All right, so now we're going to create some waves so we can take Megatron. We'll turn them sideways like this. So I'm not going to have them like this because we don't want fat lines. We're going to turn them sideways like this. So that way we can use the thin part of them to make these thin lines. So we'll go ahead and clean them off. And we're going to use our pure white paint. And over here under the moonlight, let's just go ahead and create some nice little lines. So I have my brush sideways like this. And I'm going to create some nice little highlights going down the center. And now we'll wait for our paint to dry again. Now that everything's nice and dry, we'll go ahead and make some of these clouds that are sitting on top of the moon. And for that, we're gonna get Ignacio back out. And we're gonna dry him off. So let's go ahead and dip Ignacio into the lavender. For these clouds, we're just keeping our brush strokes circular. And just around here, I'm just gonna go in a little bit on the moon. And I'll add a little bit of white lighten it up a little bit. So if there's any parts of your moon that look a little bit wonky, go ahead and put a cloud on it. And we can bring some of these clouds out into the blue part. 
Now that we have the purple clouds in, let's go ahead and put a little bit of light blue on our brush and we're going to make some blue clouds coming in from the side to kind of overlap the purple a little bit. So around here I'm just going to add a little bit of blue and just bring in a cloud and I'm just going to add a few of these around the canvas. And I'll take some of this blue paint and I'll darken up this cloud I just made. Now that we have the clouds done, we can go ahead and get started on the whale tail. So let's go ahead and get Ignacio back out. And we're gonna dip them into the black paint. So first we're gonna make a line going about six inches up. So I'm just gonna make a horizontal line starting at the center of the canvas and going to the right. And I'm gonna stop when I get to about four or five inches from the right side of the canvas. And now I'm gonna go towards the bottom part of my moon a little bit slightly to the right of the halfway point. And I'll just go ahead and draw a curved line connecting the two. Let's go across about three inches. And we can finish off this curve here. And now everything inside of that whale tail we can fill in with black. Now that we have that main bottom section, we'll go ahead and do the actual flipper part. The center seam of the tail is going to be right there. So from there, our whale tail kind of hangs down low and then meets right there. And don't be afraid to make this whale tail long, you know, it's going to be the focus of this painting, so don't be afraid to make it nice and big. We're going to be about right there. I'm going to make it drop down a little bit lower. And we're essentially creating this teardrop shape right here. You see how this kind of forms a teardrop? So let's go ahead and fill in the teardrop with black. And now we're just going to draw this nice shape here. It's going to get kind of round. And now since this whale's kind of turned at an angle, on this side it's going to be a little bit shorter. And we can go ahead and create another teardrop shape. So we're still going to come up like so, but it's going to end about here, about three inches from the right side of the canvas. And fill it in. And now since the center is here, I'm just going to bring this part out a little bit more so that the seam is more on in the center right, and I'm just going to drop this a little bit lower and instead of like a sharp point right there we're just going to smooth it out so it's nice and round and this tail actually hangs down a little bit lower because of the angle and we'll bring the seam out this way and lastly we'll just do this little hump right here and that's the top part of the fin that's coming in. You paint with what's called values, three values. There's the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. So that took care of the shadows. Next up, we'll do the midtones. And we're gonna create the midtones using the cobalt blue paint and Ignacio. So let's go ahead and put Ignacio into the blue paint. And we're just going to trace over this right side. And now we're just going to slowly bring that over to the left. So it starts mixing in with the darker color. And gives us this nice gradient. And we're going to do the same thing on the left side here. And this part of the tail is still really wet, so we'll wait a few minutes and let it dry. And now that the whale's dried a little bit, we can go back with Ignacio. Put some blue paint on him. We'll go ahead and just fill in this bottom part right here with a little bit of blue. We're gonna slowly bring it up to the top of the whale tail. And now we'll put a little bit of light blue back onto our brush and fill it in from the top here. So we'll create a nice little line that goes like this. And we'll bring this down. And we'll add a little bit of blue on my brush to kind of knock back that lightness. And from here we can kind of blend it in. And we'll add it again over here on this side. And then we'll go in with regular blue and build it from the bottom up. And then this little hump here we'll just go ahead and add a little bit of this blue. Now this is the light blue. And now one more time, I'm just going to redraw this line that we lost here. And I'm going to add another line here to the top. 
And one more time coming from this left fin. And we're going to take this light blue and make another line over here on the left side. So that's the shadows in the mid-tones of the tail. So now we can go back in and add the highlights. And for the highlights, I'm going to use Ignacio again and just use the pure white paint. So with this pure white, I'm just going to lighten up this bottom part here where the whale tail meets the actual water. If you're having a hard time getting a thin line with Ignacio, you can always use Little Tito. So we'll add some waves behind the whale tail over here on the right hand side. And we'll add plenty over here to the left as well. We can add a nice white highlight here on the left edge of the tail. We're using a combination of lines and little dots to create these streams and also these splashes. And now we'll just go around and add some of these drops that are coming down from the tail. So I'm just going to kind of outline this tail using a series of dabs with the white. So that whole bottom edge of the tail we can kind of get rid of with this white. And then uh, we'll go down with our brush at a slight angle and create a bunch of these little drips. This white is also going to splash on top of the whale itself. And before we bring the splashes to the foreground of the water, we're going to go ahead and create a nice little shadow right beneath here so that way you can see the reflection of the tail in the water and make it look a little bit more realistic. So you can use Ignacio if he has a nice fine tip. If you have a hard time getting a fine line with Ignacio, you can always switch over to Little Tito if you want. So now we're just going to make some black lines right here, creating some shadows. And I'm going to kind of go around where my highlights are. That way my highlights stay intact and I'm just going to create some shadows going right around them. So I have my highlights and my shadows working together. And now I'm just going to do the rim of this part in black one more time just to kind of help separate itself from the uh, background. And I'll introduce some black back in here onto the whale tail so he has more of a slight fade there. A lot of this white is going to come up into the tail so I'm going to start off with a series of dabs and I'm really going to make this nice and choppy because water is unpredictable and choppy and that's what we're going for. We can also create a, a few little lines going up. And these splashes are going to go well beyond the whale. We'll bring a couple of these little splashes up here into this whale tail. Dab a little bit of light blue on there just so it's not so perfectly white. Now that we have the whites done, we're just going to finish up this painting with a couple of yellow highlights so we can put Ignacio back into the yellow paint. And I'm just going to trace over the, this white line with a little bit of yellow now. Kind of going across the top part right here. And also one more on this side here. And then we have a few yellow highlights right here on the water. So we'll just go ahead and take Ignacio or Little Tito if you're comfortable making little lines with Tito. We're just going to introduce some yellow to some of these highlights here. And there we have it. That's all the steps that you need to know in order to paint this painting right here. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. If you do like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing and don't forget to put a like on this video because it does help me out a lot. Every week I do a giveaway for the painting that I painted last week and all you need to do to enter the giveaway is be a subscriber and leave a comment in the video. And this week's winner is... Congratulations. Go ahead and private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact info and mail you your painting. I've recently set up a Patreon page, so if you guys want, the link is down below. This show takes a lot of resources and time, so anything that you guys want to pledge is always greatly appreciated. Once again, my name is Gabe. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, stay creative. videos 
flowing around my head. Click them, click them, they're wonderful stuff. We have painting classes and time lapses. Ah, oh, it's so nice, it's so nice. Have fun.